Hello, my name is Troy Knutson. I am a personal trainer and I was born again about 16 years ago and I've been studying the song for about since then uh, for a long time. I really wanted to understand it. It was a song that illustrates the love of God uh, and through a parable, uh, Solomon loving his wife. Uh, and here we can see an illustration of God's love to Israel. We can also see illustrated uh, Christ's love to the church as we see a husband loving his wife as he ought to. And as I've studied the book over the years, I found that there's five phases of growth in the Christian life. You can see those in 1 John uh, 2, 12 through 14. You can see the uh, distinct phases. There is in 1 John 2, 12 through 14, you can see the child, you can see the young man, you can see the strong young man, and you can see the father. If you wanted to get understand the babe phase, you'd have to go to Corinthians and Hebrews and uh, or click on the babe phase on this website and you can learn about the babe phase as well much more clearly. But this is just a home page just to explain a little bit more about what the site is and, and hopefully whet your appetite to uh, helping you experience God's love to the fullest um, as he intends to. So uh, here on the home page you have Ephesians 5 uh, 25 and this is on my website here Solomon's song of songs .com. so you can either watch the video you can go there you can look at the notes while I'm talking and get an idea of uh, the website and and the purpose of it so uh, Ephesians 5 25 says husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the word. And this is through all the phases of life. The husband still ought to love his wife, and his job is to present her holy and blameless. Um, and Solomon does that through the song. He takes his bride from being immature to being fully mature by chapter 8. And he does this through encouraging her, uh, loving her, praising her character, and so he praises her based on what phase of life she's in. If she's in the babe phase, he compliments her and praises her based on what she's doing then. If she's a strong young woman, she's doing different things. That, and he's praising her for those things as well. She's much more mature and she's doing different things and she's growing. And so here you have the different phases. You have the babe phase, the child phase, the young man, the strong young man, and the father. Uh, so chapter 1 is the babe phase, chapter 2 to 3, 5 I put for the child phase and the young man 3, 6 to 5, 1. The strong young man 5, 2 to 8, 4 and the father 8, 5 to 8, 14. Now these phases aren't distinct phases. Now, obviously when you're born again you're a babe and you're only a babe. Uh, and you've got your doctrine not quite right, you're learning, you don't know anything. So you're not a father. A father can teach everybody but a child is just learning. Um, so here's the babe phase and then it blends in and then you become a child and you know for sure that your sins are forgiven for his name's sake and then you become a young man uh, the young man has overcome the evil one the evil one's going to want to get you to doubt your salvation and get you to sin by believing lies so once that happens and you, you get your understanding right and you get the word of God abiding in you now you're a strong young man and you have overcome the evil one and you have the word of God abiding in you and then uh, you see more of Christ, you understand Him more, and you learn to stay humble through longer periods of time and hold longer communion with the Lord. And then you grow to become a father, and then a father understands everything. Uh, they've been through all the phases of life. They can help someone through the phases of life. And that's the last chapter. So uh, Solomon, by the last chapter, has helped his wife become fully mature. And so by chapter 8, verse 14, you have what I believe to be the highest attainable level of holiness here on earth. And so the song helps you understand how to get there, how to get there. And it's happy. It's not like a miserable life. God wants you to experience his love. And it's wonderful. So what's the Song of Songs about? If you think about it, the God of the universe authored the Song of Songs. And it's a love poem. So 
It's a love poem written to those who have a burning desire for a closer intimate relationship with himself through Jesus Christ. So this is not for just your 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 average person can read it, but they're not going to they're not going to grow cuz they're not saved and your Christian as you read it it'll flame up that fire if if you've lost it, it'll it'll bring it back and it'll get you going and moving forward and it'll also help guide you. Uh, but it's a love poem from God. And God wants you to, as in Song 5.1, uh, drink your fill. So by the point that you're mature enough, by Song 5.1, basically it'll be like God saying, here's my love, experience it and as much as you want. And it, it, it's just wonderful, uh, that experience. Uh, God's love once tasted by the soul is more delightful than wine. It's more delightful than anything else. Things can give you pleasure and delight, but experiencing God's love is more delightful to the Christian, to the Christian that wants a closer relationship with God, to a Christian that has actually tasted the goodness and love of God uh, through being forgiven by Jesus Christ uh, of our sins. Uh, we, we taste His love. Uh, having drunk your fill, You'll greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. That's 1 Peter 1.18. That's joy inexpressible. Do you want to experience joy inexpressible? <laughs> you, you learn the song, you meditate on it, and you move forward, and you constantly grow. And you will not be able to express the joy that you have in your heart. Um, your one burning desire as a new believer is to behold the beauty of the Lord. You may not know what that is, but it, it's really understand looking at Jesus Christ and seeing Him as beautiful, seeing Him as holy. Uh, beauty in uh, of Jesus Christ is His moral excellency, His holiness, and um, that's really what the Christian wants. And as you read the song, you see the love of Christ, and you see that beauty, and it draws you closer to Him. Uh, and that beauty is what the psalmist wants in Psalm 27.4. It's the only thing he wanted. If you look at that, it's uh, behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Uh, it's the only one desire. And isn't it wonderful when scripture lets you know that you should have one desire and, and seek after that. Not this desire here or there and that and a whole bunch of different things. But one desire. Uh, and then once you've experienced this love, you will know it. Uh, Ephesians 3.19 says... Uh, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. So here, love, you're not, it's, it's a feeling, and it's also an action. It's things you do. Uh, it comes through an understanding of God's love for us. Uh, we love because He first loved us, but it surpasses our knowledge. That doesn't mean you don't understand it at all. It just, it just means that it really love can't be defined, but it's better felt than understood. That's Jonathan Edwards. Um, in saying that as well too, but uh, Ephesians three nineteen is uh, talks about this love of Christ. It surpasses our knowledge. So the song helps you feel God's love, uh, and once you felt it, it's more delightful than wine. So it's addicting, uh, and you ask for it over and over and over again. I Many Christians don't ask for it. I, I you need to ask God to show you His love over and over and over again as you're reading through the scriptures. Help me understand your love. Help me understand it better and better and better. Okay? Uh, and the woman says this in, in Song 1-2, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his lips, for your love is more delightful than mine. So she's basically asking me, you know, God doesn't kiss us, but he can show us affection, uh, and we can understand it. We can understand his love uh, through the scriptures, uh, through prayer, worship, uh, loving others, we experience God's love, and then God answers this by pouring out the. God answers the prayer of showing us a love by shedding it abroad in our hearts. That's um, uh, Romans five. Uh, sheds it. Uh, the Holy Spirit does that. The Holy Spirit communicates God's love to our heart, uh, to our understanding, and to our will. Uh, and to the degree. If you keep asking for it, many Christians will ask, and then it feels good, and they're reading the scriptures or they're worshiping. But you got to keep asking for it, even when when you're getting it. And the woman does this in saw in chapter two at the beginning of chapter two. She's experiencing the love of Solomon, and she wants it more and more and more and more. And she experiences it to the point that she faints, and it's just all too much for her. Uh, the Christian can have that experience as well too, where the love of God is so overpowering, our bodies physically can't handle it, and you'll get weak. Um, 
and I explain how to do that in the song. Uh, and on the one part, it's uh, overpowering love of Christ, overpowering love of God experienced. I think I titled that. Uh, so I invite you to study the song uh, and to taste this love uh, that's better felt than understood. And that's Jonathan Edwards again. Uh, you start with the babe phase and move your way higher, deeper, wider, and longer into the vast ocean of God's love uh, to you through Christ. So start with the babe phase. You need to, even if you think you're mature, you think, you know, uh, even the fathers need to understand the babe phase so they can help them through the babe phase. But there's things in the babe phase that I believe many mature people even are missing uh, that would help them. So you need to understand the babe phase, like particularly, you know, dark am I yet lovely. It teaches you how to balance your emotions. Uh, sometimes our emotions are here, there, and everywhere. But with the meditation of dark am I yet lovely, I'm a sinful person, yet I'm lovely in Jesus Christ. That meditation balances your emotions. And also the fact that she keeps asking for it, even when she's receiving it and it's all wonderful, she still keeps asking for it. And I think many Christians will stop asking for it. Uh, when their life feels fine and everything's great and their walk with the Lord is good. No, you still keep asking for it. Um, and she does that in the song. Also in chapter one, helps teach you how to commune with the Lord. Um, so uh, a bit better. Uh, otherwise, if you skip the babe phase, you skip any of the phases. And, and, and even if you think you're a young man or a father, you're gonna, you're, your walk is going to be stagnant. And I only know that from experience. So uh, that's what I believe. Uh, the song is about the most excellent lovers loving with the most excellent love that's a quote from jonathan edwards i love that um and solomon has a sanctifying effect on the woman by loving her she sees the glory of god she's changed by it that's a uh, second corinthians three eighteen. if you see that if we behold the glory of god we're transformed from one level of glory to another so the book is about sanctification it's how jesus christ sanctifies us and takes us from one level of of glory to another. So if the babe phase was a level of glory, the child phase is a greater level of glory. And so is the young man and then strong young man and then father and then the highest level here on earth. Okay, so once you know the phases, where you are, where you've been and where you need to go and what you need to do, you'll have a crystal crystal clear idea of, of where to go. You're not going to be lost. Um, you could pretend you're the woman in the song and, and find out where you are and see how Solomon would lead you to the next phase and you're not lost. You, and you can also see where you've been. Uh, and you also know where to go. You, you've got clear direction. Uh, most people give direction on what to do. Yeah, read your Bible, you pray, uh, worship, go to church, confess your sins. Some people use acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, and you're just doing that throughout the day. But each phase tends to have a specific thing that you ought to be doing at that time. Like a babe needs to drink milk. Uh, a child uh, does something different than a young man and a strong young man and a father. So each phase has uh, a particular uh, thing that you ought to be doing that would help you move to the next phase and help you grow and experience God's love to greater depths and degrees and lengths and heights and depths. It's just a beautiful song. Um, Okay, and you need your eyes fixed on the matchless love of Christ and you'll run the race with lightning speed, fearlessly moving forward and with great perseverance like a mare harnessed to the fer chariot's pharaohs, uh, to Pharaoh's chariot. That's uh, song 1-9 and, and he compares her to that. Here's a woman that has in the song uh, a deep desire for a close intimate relationship with Solomon and she pursues that and, and fearlessly. Uh, even though she was an enemy of Solomon in this kingdom, uh, she understands Solomon's character as being forgiving and loving, and so she still pursues a relationship fearless. Uh, and then lastly, 1 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be e adequately equipped for every good work. So the song is profitable. And what's it profitable for? It's profitable for teaching. So it teaches many things. And the focus of this site is to help teach spiritual growth. It, I mean, it teaches a husband how to love his wife. It teaches uh, many things. Uh, but the main focus, what's missing and why I'm doing the website, is, is people don't see the phases. 
uh, of growth that the woman's going through. And then therefore a husband could love his wife even better, understanding what phase she's in and also what phase he's in. Uh, so it teaches you the phases of growth, of how to move from one level of glory to another. So it's profitable for that. It's profitable for teaching. It's also profitable for reproof. So once you understand the phases and how to go there, if you're off, it'll reproof you. It'll also correct you. Uh, so during this process of teaching, uh, reproofing, uh, and correcting you, you get trained uh, in righteousness. Um, you, 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 you understand what's going on in, in your life, and you can move forward, and you get trained through it. Um, without a guide, uh, the Holy Spirit will still train you, uh, but you can get there a lot faster if you, you have a guide and a lot better. Uh, so, uh, my name is Troy Knudsen again. This is uh, the first video I've actually done on this. It's on my website, solomonsongofsongs.com. Uh, you can go there and check it out. And, and uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and um, uh, ask, some, ask on the website, fill out a form or something and ask questions and I'll help you out. I'll answer anybody on the site uh, and also here on uh, YouTube. Okay, thanks. God bless you. Have a good one. And may God's love overpower you and may you experience it in ways that you've never known before. Uh, uh, God bless. Bye.